Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party kind of knock -off fish review. Today I'm taking a look at the Yes model YM05, uh, sometimes referred to as the BB7 YM05. This is of course uh, Yes model's interpretation of the Conehead Thrust. Now I have been eagerly awaiting this figure. It's based on a cancelled third party uh, release. I can't recall the name of the third party, uh, but they were going to do the Coneheads and basically they got cancelled and uh, suddenly BB7 Yes model, they were doing them. Now I do have the KBB model and of course the Masterpiece model to compare this guy to. Uh, he comes in a lovely plastic clamshell but unfortunately just has that brown mailer style box for his outsides. He also comes with a baggie filled with accessories. It kind of seems a bit like an afterthought, uh, like they weren't going to release it with these, uh, but uh, yes they all come in this nice little bag. Here we have the complete set of accessories. See there's quite a lot there. We have lots of different variations. We of course get a base stand, uh, which is something that Takara isn't giving us with the official cone heads. We get the two large Takara style thrusters. We get two smaller rockets. We get the standard Null Ray esque guns attached to a thrust. We have the extra missiles that we would get with our standard seekers. We get a Megatron. We get a set of stickers. We get two knee pads, we get a G1 alternative style head, uh, actually very nice to look at, slightly different expression to the official Takara release uh, and slightly different proportions as well, it's a good size. We get a clip for Megatron and we get the uh, clear translucent pilot and we also get the clear translucent version of the Doctor. Megatron is a nice big solid lump that can be taken apart and put back together. He's not die cast though, the ones we were getting with KBB are die cast, but that being said, this one is definitely a lot bigger. It's a very big version of Megatron. Now one thing that strikes me as very strange is we get an open baggie on the back of the plastic clamshell and no instruction manual. Now I have checked with other people that have received this particular product and they haven't received instructions either. It's not just a TF Direct thing, they've got theirs from other suppliers and it would appear that YES model actually forgot to include instructions. Right, getting up close and personal, it's a very nice representation of thrust. Uh, having him in hand, he's very solid. Again, like the rest of the Yes model figures, it's very well made and it's made to an exceptionally high standard. Now the colour is slightly different to what we get with both the Takara and the Kubanbao. Uh, this, in my opinion, is actually far more G1 toy in colour, but uh, very, very close to what we got on the animation cells as well. It's a good looking version of Thrust. Uh, it's it's nice. So they've done a very good job. Now I do have their Ramjet en route to me as we speak. I'm very excited to get that one as well. And now of course we do get the various different options. Uh, to mount the weapons. Uh, we still only get one set of holes on the underside. Uh, the Corbin Bow will give us a second set. Uh, unfortunately we don't get that with the S model, but we do get the alternative uh, maroon missiles, which are nice, again cast in a very nice hard plastic. Uh, basic detailing on there, the sections here are pretty sharp. Uh, these peg on where the Nelray style weapons peg on. We get the big rockets, which are the same sort of thing as what we get with the masterpiece versions of Ramjet. Uh, these just split in half and can go around the null ray sections. And then we get these, which are very similar to what we get with the official masterpiece version. And they can peg in to the underside of the turbines. For some reason, the peg is a little bit too small to fit these rockets in there so you'd have to switch it out but the larger missiles they do fit in there nicely and that's a really good look for that wing section. 
Now, if you wanted to give it more of a G1 toy look, uh, you can always switch out these missile pods here. They've got a ball joint socket here, so you can stick those on the end of the null ray section, and you can have this pointed section. If you remember, the original G1 toy uh, kind of had the chunky launchers, and used to be able to fire the missiles. Now, that's where these ones come into play. Again, they don't fire, but they definitely give that more kind of retro feel to it. As far as the actual paint scheme goes, though, it's a little bit neither here nor there. It's very close uh, to the G1 animation, but I think the grey could have been a little bit darker, and they had like a blackish section coming down here, didn't they, on the animation. Uh, but it's a fairly good effort. It's not that dissimilar to what we get with the official Takara release. Speaking of which, here it is. As you can see, they are very similar in design. The tail fins are bigger on the Yes model, and the grey is a different shade, as too is the kind of red. Uh, it's actually, in my opinion, more like it's uh, more like the toy counterpart. It's a very maroony red as opposed to the kind of almost pastel look of the Takara release. Uh, but that being said, both are made very well. Both feel very solid in hand. And if you're looking for a good thrust to have in your jet mode, um, at the moment, I think Yes Model would win. And of course, it's only fair if we include the Kubanbao offering as well. It's without a shadow of a doubt the weakest of all three, in my opinion. Uh, I may be slightly biased because mine snapped. Now, I have been informed that the hinge problem was actually a common problem with the MP03, uh, which the eye gear uh, cone heads were a kind of modded knockoff of, and these are based on the eye gear versions. So uh, that may be where that problem has arisen from. I've been told that you can actually sand off a little bit of that hinge and make it work. Uh, but it's the first Gubben Bow figure that's really done that to me. Starscream's chest come unpinned, and then this did this. Gubben Bow, they're not really winning me over. Again, just taking a look at the underside. Uh, you know, Takara's is really nice on the underside. I love how they've got the bend and kink in the null ray sections and how they can flip over. Uh, but at the same time, I don't like the gaping hole where the head is. Uh, basically, they've done the mod, so the head is a separate section which can come out and rotate. I really like how they've done that. But at the same time, when you get the head section still attached, it really does fill up that underside and makes it look tidier. Uh, I don't like how DS model have failed to paint the underside of their turbines. Uh, it's kind of been left blank. I don't like that. But I also like how crisp and clean the paint applications are around the knee pad areas and just overall uh, how tidy it looks even with these added missile sections and how really bold and striking the likes of the thrusters are. Favourite of the cone heads as a kid. It was actually the only cone head toy that I had. Uh, my dad picked it up for me from a car boot sale. That's like a yard sale, but held in a field. And it was a really good toy. I think I was missing all the hands and the weapons, but uh, needless to say, he got well used. We have the painted up chair in the cockpit section here. We have the standard sections like the flip up air brake section. We have the thrusters at the back, which can be moved. And of course we have the landing gear on the underside and at the front, we can pull the nose cone out and pull it over to the one side, revealing the radar dish, pretty much standard that we get with every single seeker mold. And here he is alongside the Takara Ramjet, just in case you guys have him and you'd like a comparison to see how they look together. It's a very nice partnership indeed. Now, like I said, I am getting the uh, Yes Model Ramjet. He should arrive probably Monday. Uh, so, of course, I will do a full comparison. I mean, do you guys actually want me to review the Takara versions as well? It's entirely up to you. Just let me know in the comments section below. Now, let's get him transformed up 
into his robot mode. For starters, we'll just unplug these extra missile sections from the underside. And you wanna untab his lasers and they're gonna come up and you just want to rotate those around like so. Put all of the landing gear away. Now mine isn't without fault. My landing gear, the little hatch here, does seem to wanna to keep falling off every time I open it up. But I, I mean, you can open it and it doesn't come off, but if you push it and give it a little bit of a wiggle, I think it isn't quite pegged in there as deeply as it could be, and so just bear that in mind. Uh, we next step is to grab these leg sections, giving them a little wiggle. They do, of course, extend down. We can push this section up. Now it is incredibly stiff on my version, so just be very mindful when giving it a push. Come around to the toes, untab them, and rotate them around. Split those legs open, and with this heel spur section, just flip the back section up, bring the back down, and then close this section back off. Grab this back section and lift that up, which untabs the sections, which then allows us to fold those over. Grabbing this section here, you wanna pull that up and outwards away from the arms. Just bring the wing sections back to give us enough room here. We wanna bring the arms outwards from the torso there. And again, on this side, you wanna bring it outwards from the torso. You can then straighten out these fists and rotate that arm section upwards and then push the arms forwards. Untab the ab section and bringing them out and down, they are on a pivoting hinge and bring that down on both sides. With the ab sections pushed to either side, you can come around to the nose cone section. You want to split that in two lift the back glass up, rotate the cab upwards and bring that back down. You can then thread this section through this gap. And as we bring this section through, and you literally need to keep this back section all the way down because the clearance is next to none on his little cone head. <laughs> so you then thread this section through those ab section here and as we bring that through we can bring the chest over up and back around much the same as we do with the standard seeker mold and that can just tab in on the underside and then square that up uh, this section being the same as a seeker mold does still have the tab and of course Yes Model and BB7 both enlarged this tab section. Uh, so it should slot in. Should be able to bring the shoulders up and over, and then slide this torso section down. And as we slide that down, we're gonna line that up with that tab. pushing that firmly into place. Now, so at this point, you get to choose what you want to do with the wings. Now we can go the full normal seeker route and we can bring this section up. It's on the double hinge, which isn't going to snap because there's clearance and it's been rounded off. Uh, take note, Kubumbao. And you do get the little peg section here, which you can flip up. You can bring this section up on the double hinge and just tab that into the back section here like so and you can have the wing nicely raised like this. On the other hand, uh, you could also rotate this section. This section can also rotate. Uh, you can bring this section all the way down and around like so. So when we bring this section up on the double hinge, you can also have the wings facing downwards like that. Not really sure why you'd want to do that, <laughs> but it's, it's an option nonetheless. Uh, my personal preference is actually to have this section down and these sections facing downwards like so as well. Just tab those back in and we can bring those to the back slightly so they don't get hindered by the legs. And that, in my opinion, is very close to what we got with his D1 animation and the toy itself. We have him all transformed up into his robot mode. Obviously I've gone for the wings downwards. Uh, I've decided to keep the uh, more cartoon accurate black 
sections on and we can put these on and make it look more like the toy or maybe these ones. I don't really know why they included the big chunky ones. I don't really recall there being a thrust with those sections on. Uh, I love how he looks. To be honest with you, I think out of all three bot modes, he is actually my favourite. He's just a little bit more slender. Uh, things seem to be uh, in better proportion. Uh, I just like how he looks. I like what they've done with him, and it definitely works. Now, I like the knee pads that come as standard. If you don't like them, if you want to go something more like the toy, they're literally just tabbed in. Uh, you can fill them up from this side, and then pop them out with the circular tab over on the other side. They do just wiggle free. As you see, they're just tabbed in to the side there. Uh, but I really like how they look. It's nice. Uh, it's not as chunky as the official release either. It's They're good, solid knee pads. But what, I pray thee, are these? Uh, I don't actually have a Scooby-Doo where these go. Uh, not having any instructions. <laughs> it's... It's a guesswork, and I really don't know. Am I being an idiot here? Am I meant to go on here somehow? Can they fit on the bottom of the legs? There must be somewhere blatantly obvious that these little bits live, and I can't find anywhere. I mean, I don't remember them being on any other versions of him. I, I don't know. Uh, Maybe it's me being silly. Uh, call me uh, idiotic, but uh, I have not got a clue. Right, before we take a look at the other versions of this character, let's take a look at the articulation. The head is on a pivot at the back there, so it can rotate backwards and forwards, and it's on this individual ball joint. Uh, we can look left and we can look right. The shoulders can come out to the side. They can come forwards, but they do tend to move that chest section up a little bit. I don't know if you can kind of tab that in. It doesn't want, it constantly wants to come up uh, and come out to the side. We do have an upper bicep rotation. We have a nice double jointed bend at the elbow with a nice piston on the back there. The hands are pretty much the same with a ball jointed thumb, uh, two ball joints, and the fingers are joined via a pin. The waist has a little bit of a wiggle in there, but it is super solid. It is not going anywhere. Uh, it's a good thing, you know. The, the Takara version of the mold is a bit of a mess when it comes to the waist. The legs can come this far forwards. Uh, they can come that far back. You are hindered by the fact I've got these down. If they were up to the back, it wouldn't be hindered at all. We can come out to the side that much. There is an upper thigh rotation. We do have a nice bend at the knee. Coming down to the feet, the toes do wiggle. The center of the foot does wiggle and the heel section wiggles slightly. That's about it. You'd think in this day and age you might actually get some nice ankle pivots on a seeker, wouldn't you? But nope, not at the moment. Now that's a very nice head sculpt. Uh, for thrust, but in my opinion, that's a little bit too kind of classics generation style. I do prefer the alternative head sculpt that they've provided that, in my opinion, is very much more like his on-screen counterpart. So just to switch that over, it's literally just ball mounted. You can just pop the other head off and pop this one on. There we go. There. Much better, and I really like the proportions of that. Here he is with Mr. Wibbly Wobbly Big Head himself. As you can see, he's actually a fraction taller than the official thrust. Uh, I just prefer his proportions. I think he looks more slender. And uh, you can actually swap the heads over. I believe the ball is pretty much identical in size. But obviously the colour here is not going to match. You can clearly see the difference uh, when you have the two alongside each other. Look at him, he doesn't even want to stand properly. Uh, let's just show you. Uh... <laughs> and of course, just to be completely fair, here he is alongside the Kubumbao representative as well. Uh, I'm actually getting pretty sick of transforming seekers. <laughs> I've done so many, uh, but uh, 
I really like how this looks. See, it's a very solid figure. Uh, I don't think anything's going to break on it. They've had a good mess around with it. Nothing seems untowards. There are uh, the odd sprue mark. Unfortunately, you get like, the little dibble bits here. Um, you get the odd bits around. And like I said, I would like both sides of this to be painted. Uh, but as it is, you flip it around to form the back. And you don't actually... Uh, need them to be painted. I love the colour of it. It's very nice. It's very striking. I love how it all holds together. I would have preferred a similar sort of transformation as the official mould just to give these sections here a bit more security because they are uh, reliant on this hinge here. Uh, and I'm just, I just, I'm just scared of this hinge since I uh, experienced breakage with him. Um, but you've got a lot of rotation on this section here. You can bring it forward and backwards, so really there shouldn't be any real hindrance. Uh, and he does really look the part. That's a very nice head sculpt. I mean, it is different to the official sculpt. You can see that they've kind of got similarities going on. Uh, I think the official sculpt is probably more accurate to the cartoon, uh, but it's just too big. He's just got a big fat head. Uh, it just doesn't really work for me. So there we have it ladies and gentlemen, another solid offering from the guys over at Yes Models. They are very quickly becoming one of my favourite uh, knockoff third party brands. They are consistent and they are delivering a very high end product for a very small fractional cost. Help me out. Tell me what on earth these bits are, please. That's what the comment section below is for. I've included links over on the side here to other Yes Model product reviews. Thanks again to the guys over at TF Direct for making this video possible. I have the oversized masterpiece Starscream, the MPP-10 Evangelion Prime with trailer, and of course the Yes Model Ramjet en route as we speak. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up. Feel free to share it amongst your friends and family and feel free to subscribe. Until next time from myself and Yes Model 05 aka Thrust, a goodbye.